Yeah. Hi, Celia. Hi. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'd like to take the opportunity on behalf of the Education Centre Network, ESCI, to welcome you all to this afternoon's webinar. Um, firstly, I would like to thank a couple of people who made this possible. Terry O'Sullivan, our director in uh, Tralee Education Centre, who made the initial contact with uh, the IMC Integrated Media uh, Company, who have been supporting us on this initiative. And a special thank you to uh, Leo Colgan and Shane Hartigan, who have uh, you know, led us on this journey of providing uh, Zoom webinars to our teachers around the country and um, have been so supportive and helpful. We're really grateful uh, for their assistance. We're in a very challenging uh, and on uh, a charter time of uh, the, in the education system in Ireland, I suppose, as is every profession. And uh, it has been very difficult as a network to find useful and practical ways for us to support all of the teachers out there. But uh, we acknowledge that principals and teachers around the country are doing amazing work in supporting their students uh, through this difficult time and have taken on new initiatives and innovative ways of connecting and supporting their students uh, you know, continually for the past five weeks. Um, these webinars that we've been um, supporting and uh, initiating are our way of providing CPD uh, in a remote sense or uh, in an online way to help you to better support your students and uh, these will be ongoing and we hope to provide further resources uh, to you, uh, you know, in the future to support the work that you're doing. Um, I've been joined today by a number of my colleagues uh, from education centres around the country. Uh, you can see them there, Dimna from West Cork, uh, Karen from Carrick on Shannon, Susan from Black Rock, uh, Car uh, Lorraine from Wexford, Michael from Mayo, Maureen from Dublin West, Carmel from Limerick, Jackie from Donegal and uh, John uh, from Kilkenny. And uh, we look forward to uh, engaging with you in a really hopefully helpful uh, webinar uh, around the whole area of Zoom and what it can do to support your teachers and, uh, and yourselves in uh, communicating uh, mainly and also providing learning opportunities for your students. So I uh, hope you enjoyed and please fill in the, the evaluation forms at the end, which will give us information as to what are the best ways we can support you going forward during this challenging time. And the best of luck to you all. I'll hand back to Leo now in uh, to support the webinar. So many thanks, Celia, for the introduction, and you're all very welcome, ladies and gentlemen, today to today's webinar. We're delighted to be partnering with the Education Centre Network around the country in delivering these webinars, and I hope you'll get what you're looking for out of it. What we essentially want to do is to demonstrate how easy Zoom is to use. So today's panelists joining me, myself is Ava O'Dee, who's the primary school principal from the Model School in Limerick. And Ava is going to give a primary school perspective on how he's used Zoom and what his intentions are. We also have Kieran Driscoll, Driscoll from uh, Gwail Colosh to Limney, who's the secondary school assistant principal, and she is going to give us the secondary school perspective. Uh, and we have Jason Mobley from Florida, who is uh, leading, the, leading the charge with Zoom on the third level front. So I hope uh, from the panelists and what they have to say that you will garner some valuable information. So why are we here today? So I guess IMS's history with Zoom. We adopted Zoom. We were one of the early adopters of Zoom in the country. We adopted Zoom a number of years ago. And the reason we did was we wanted to cut down on travel and expense within our company. And we also wanted to uh, make the most of meeting times when, when we would be going traveling for a half an hour meeting in London or, or up to Dublin and back. So we wanted a platform that was very easy to use uh, and could integrate with our systems. We tried them all and we came, we, when we came across Zoom, we loved it. And that's, I guess, put us in a very good position when this crisis came to enable our clients to work from home uh, and to help them through this crisis. So we, work a lot in the hospitality industry and uh, the education industry and a lot of the hospitality world has fallen off a cliff unfortunately and what we 
what we did was we decided that we would offer Zoom uh, as a free as a free license uh, offer to all our clients to help them adapt to the current current crisis. And a lot of schools started to contact us when, when we pushed this out. Uh, and Terry O'Sullivan, as Celia mentioned, asked would we do a webinar for, for Kerry first, and then we subsequently have run webinars right around the country. So what we're going to do today is we're going to show you how, to, how secure Zoom is, uh, how to set up Zoom properly, to demonstrate the potential of Zoom as a teaching tool. And, to enable people to avail of the Zoom offer. So before I go into the presentation, I just want a little, little bit of housekeeping here. So you'll all have noticed at the bottom of your screen, you should be able to see little buttons. One is Q&A uh, and one is raise hand and one is chat. So we've disabled the chat, but the raise hand button is for at the end, we're gonna have leave time for Q&A. So you can raise your hand at that stage and we will be able to uh, invite you up, uh, invite your voice up to ask a question and the panel will answer. So at the end, when, when we invite you for the Q&A, please raise your hand if you have a question. In the meantime, throughout the, throughout the webinar, you can click on Q&A at the bottom and type in a question. And we have a team of people in the background that will answer those questions throughout the presentation. And then that way, when we come to the end, the raised hand people will be the ones uh, that we'll hear and we'll deal with them in the Q&A. So we're just, gonna run, we're just gonna run a poll. One of the features of Zoom webinar, which you're in at the moment, is we have the ability to run polls. So I'm gonna ask my colleague Shane to run a poll just to gauge the usage of Zoom in the audience. I know you've all logged into this webinar, so technically you're all using Zoom, but I would like to ask, I think there's many of you are using it for the first time. So I'd just like to gauge, uh, have you used it before or not? Funnily enough, when we first started doing these webinars a couple of weeks ago, the no answer was much, much more prevalent. And I think through everyday use, uh, people have started, they've been forced into using Zoom by being invited into birthday parties and various different use cases. So great stuff. Okay, so 70% of the audience has, has used Zoom before. That one from the first webinar, that was probably down in the 20s. So that's, that's good to know. Okay, so the Zoom offer. So what's in it for IMS? I guess what we're trying to do is play our part um, to this crisis. We went to Zoom and we said, guys, we want to help as best we can. Um, what can we do for our clients? And then when, once the education and the schools got involved, we went back to them. And what we can offer now is to all schools, we can offer free professional licenses, Zoom licenses for six months. So it's quite an incredible offer from Zoom. So as part of this project, we're gonna set up every school with Zoom. So every registrant here today will receive a sign-up form where they can input their, the, principal, uh, the principal name and the number of teachers and the role number of the school, and we can set up the school with Zoom. So we, we can show teachers how to record lessons and send to, send to students through platforms they may already be using, such as Seesaw and Aladdin. We'll show teachers how to integrate Zoom with platforms they could be using, such as Teams and Google Classroom. And we'll show teachers how to use Zoom to teach live lessons. So what is Zoom? So we're going to look at the basic uses and features, how to sign up, getting started, scheduling a meeting, running a meeting, and sharing content is probably one of the key things. So what is Zoom? Essentially, Zoom is a meeting tool, and it has various uh, use cases. So in terms of education, where we see Zoom coming into its own are a variety of uh, reasons. So we have the one-to-one -one meetings, we have staff meeting, SEN meetings, board of management meetings, and interestingly enough, CPSMA release a guidance note in relation to the use of teleconferencing and video conferencing for board of management meetings during the crisis and advocated the use of Zoom as one of the tools. So then we can also have meetings with other principals, committee meetings, and parents association meetings. I personally, I'm on the parents council of my children's secondary school. And at the start of this crisis, we were due to have a meeting and the chairperson uh, emailed the group to say, needless to say, the meeting's postponed. 
And I replied and I said, oh, more than ever, the parents council need to meet. We all have our kids at home and we all want a clear voice at the table of the board of management. So we held, I, I assisted in setting up the school with Zoom and we held our first parents council meeting. It was probably our best attended and most productive parents council meeting. Um, and it was really great and very successful and a lot of first time users. So subsequently we had the first board of management meeting for the school on Zoom. So ultimately, as the, the schools remain shut, we want to show how you can record your meetings as well and have pre-recorded meetings, our classes, and ultimately live teaching. So that's what Zoom meeting is. So there are other forms of Zoom and that's Zoom rooms and Zoom webinars. And you are in a Zoom webinar where all you can see is the panel, myself and my presentation and you can't see each other. So you're all, there's, there's over a thousand of you in attendance today and you can't see each other, but you can only see me and the other panelists and you're in a webinar. So it's a very good tool, specific, particularly in third level cases where there's large lectures being given. And as you, I'm sure you've all attended webinars over the last couple of weeks as well, it's becoming the tool of choice. Zoom rooms also, just to mention, is where you have, would have a meeting room and you can invite other people in. And that's more for boardrooms and meeting rooms. So that's what Zoom is. So why use Zoom? Well, we use Zoom because we, we think it's the best. We think it's the easiest to use and we've tried them all. It integrates fully with Teams and it also integrates with Google Classroom, Skype, Outlook, and it really is a tool that complements whatever you're using already. It's an industry leader for online teaching and the audio and video was probably one of the things that sets it apart. The one click to join, as many of you will have seen today by joining this webinar, one click and you're in. It requires lower bandwidth, which is crucial as well. And that means that there's less breakup and less buffering uh, compared with other systems. And it's highly supported, whether it's through us ultimately or through Zoom and the, the online resources that they have. So Zoom. It really speaks for itself. Uh, what's happened in the last few weeks speaks for itself. People like to find things that make their lives easier. And that's what Zoom does. So it's top of the app charts for a very good reason. It's easy to use, it's easy to manage. We see that it's easy to teach, easy to control your meetings, easy for teachers and easy for pupils. This is just, this is just some independent uh, independent poll from Bloomberg and it just shows how many people are using Zoom in relation to the in comparison to the others and again that really is down to ease of use. This is another poll done by JD Power and that's just finding out what people are using and what's most popular out there. And as you can see, Zoom is just way ahead of all the others. You can see Skype is there, Google Meet, Microsoft Teams, then to a lesser extent, Cisco WebEx, GoToMeeting, Amazon. But Zoom is just by far and away uh, the most popular at the moment. So with that popularity comes, uh, comes some drawback. And I guess up until now, Zoom was used mostly in the business world, a bit in the academic third level world, world as well, but mostly in, in corporate environment. And therefore the security features that are taken for granted in those environments, when it went into the popular use, weren't thought of. Uh, just to put it in, in perspective, Zoom have grown from 10 million users to in excess of 200 million users in the space of a couple of months. In the whole of 2019, Zoom added 1.19 million users. In the first month of 2020, it added 2.22 million users. And now it's well in excess of 200 million users and growing daily. So this popularity, I guess, was open to some scrutiny then from uh, the security world. So I'm sure you've heard all heard the term Zoom mob bombing. Well, every, me every Zoom meeting has a meeting ID, as you can see here. And it, it was a nine digit code. And with Zoom bombing, what people were doing was that they were typing in a random nine digit code and entering into and assuming that those people didn't have security on their meeting would jump into a meeting that they were uninvited. And then they may share content, uh, share lewd content and, and things like that. So 
what what IMS IMS have never had these issues because we implement waiting rooms, we implement passwords as by default, we make sure that our meetings are secure. I'm here today to show you that just how secure Zoom is and how safe it is. It's, a, it's as safe as houses, but if you leave your door open, someone is liable to walk in. So we're gonna show you just, how, just what Zoom have done. So the Zoom reaction to these security issues, this is Eric Wan, he's the CEO of Zoom. He's holding weekly webinars at the moment and answering live Q and A, but they've reacted exceptionally quickly and they've effectively addressed all the security concerns. They've changed the default settings so that security features which were up to the, up heretofore were up to the user to enable are now done by default. They've made the meeting ID invisible I'm sure you all saw Boris Johnson sharing pictures of his cabinet meeting on Zoom with the meeting ID up in the left-hand corner. Wasn't too clever, but what Zoom have, they've Boris, Boris Johnson proofed uh, all meetings now by making the meeting ID invisible. They've added an additional security icon, which I'm gonna step you through uh, when, you, when you first start a meeting. And they've gone as far as publishing a white paper on security. So what's very important as well that in, in the education sphere is the whole GDPR issue, privacy uh, and security. So they updated their privacy policy on March 29 to be very clear. And they're explicitly clarifying that they don't sell any user data. They've never sold data in the past and they've never no intention of selling users data going forward. They went to the extent for the education users, they rolled out a guide for administration uh, of administrators on setting up virtual classrooms. They set up guides on how to better secure your virtual classroom. They set up a dedicated privacy policy and they changed the settings so that the virtual waiting rooms were on by default, the meeting passwords were on by default, and very importantly, the teachers by default are the only ones who can share content in classrooms. They've also outlined an additional policy place, specific, uh, policy, privacy policy, and put it in place for uh, education users. And that can be found on the Zoom website. So they really have acted quickly. So I hope that delayed some of your security fears. Um, we're just gonna run another poll, if Shane can launch the next poll, just to, just to get an indication of some, what some of you see as the biggest barriers to using video conferencing in schools. While you're voting on that, I'm just gonna, uh, the next piece, I just wanna allay a lot of fears. A lot of questions have come to us saying, well, we've invested in Teams. We're, we've put a lot of time into Google Classroom. We've used Aladdin, we've used Seesaw. Um, why would we start all over again? And the good news is that you don't have to. What Zoom is, Zoom is a great complementary tool to the bar, to the to the all the platforms that you're currently using. So there's no need to throw the baby out with the bathwater here. You can integrate it. So Zoom and Teams are very. The, I, I'm hearing big debate: Zoom or Teams? Zoom or Teams? And for us, it's both. Zoom and Teams work well together. Zoom have gone to the extent where they now have a plugin for Teams. So you can actually install the Zoom plugin in your Teams environment and will appear on your toolbar. So what you're seeing here is actually my Zoom window appearing within my Microsoft Teams window. So internally, Teams is excellent for sharing coursework, for collaborating, sharing files, but for video and audio, you can only see four people on the screen. It has limitations. It doesn't have the, the features that Zoom has. So Let's use both. And that's what we do in IMS. And that's what I'm helping schools all over the country to do, integrate Zoom with their teams. So Zoom or Google Classroom. Again, the debate goes on. Google Classroom has a video conferencing uh, tool called Google Meet. But what we're saying is use Google Classroom with Zoom. Bring Zoom links and, and import them in to your Google Classroom. Use both. And you'll hear later on from Aver uh, how he integrates uh, his Zoom with Aladdin and Google and, and his G Suite. 
So one thing also I wanted to address again before we look at, at Zoom is a, a lot of questions are, are coming at us about WebEx and the difference between Zoom and WebEx. And uh, I guess the, the key difference is the ease of use. Um, we looked at WebEx when, again when we were starting video conference in IMS and we chose Zoom over, over WebEx because of the ease of use. And in certain, recently when people are asking us questions, you might have noticed that it wasn't even in the first slide comparing the different uh, the different platforms, because it really wasn't there as a as a more common usage app. But we we've in, investigated it uh, clearly here, and we can show you that Zoom is more secure. It has features like waiting rooms. It has features like password protection. It has better security and the security icon in the meeting. The virtual backgrounds, it has virtual backgrounds where WebEx doesn't. The, the screen share controls has more functionality within the Zoom environment. And essentially for teaching, it has breakout rooms and WebEx doesn't. And we'll look at the different features uh, later on, but that's just to give you a comparison. So getting started with Zoom, very easy to download on your desktop or your laptop um, when you have an account uh, and that you just go to Zoom and download. We're going to be setting that up for all the schools here. Uh, and this is what it looks like. This is what your Zoom window looks like on your desktop or your, or, or your uh, laptop. So you've new meeting, join, schedule and share screen. They're the four key things. After that, everything else is within your menus. If you're working with a device, that's fine. iPad or iPhone, Android, tablet, portable device, just go to the App Store and click Get, and that's it, and you can get Zooming. So this is what it will look like on your device. Again, you can see that these are the four key, uh, key functions, new meeting, schedule, join, or share screen, and this is how they appear on your device. So you're up and running with Zoom once you have it installed, and you can work anywhere with anyone on any device. You can start a meeting or join a video meeting on the go from any device, and you can share your content from any device to any device. So when we get started with Zoom, the first thing is how to schedule a meeting. And here's a, it's important to note that you integrate with whatever calendar you, you work with. So when you click on schedule in the schedule meeting uh, icon, you will get this calendar window and you can type in your topic, your time. You can either use a personal meeting ID or you can generate a meeting ID automatically. But if you click on the required meeting password, you then enter a password and all your attendees will be asked to enter that password. That is on by default now for all education users. So you can have the host to have the video on and the participants either on or off when the meeting starts, and then their audio, always choose telephone and computer audio as default. And then you choose your calendar. So if you're using Google Calendar, just click here. If you're using Outlook, click here, and away you go and you schedule. And this is what it looks like. My virtual coffee with Shane and Eric, who are both on the panel today. Uh, and this is how it would appear. They get a link that they click on, and it also tells them the meeting ID and the password. If they need to enter a password, this is where it'll appear. They click on that link and enter their password and they're in. And because the meeting password is um, on, the meeting is fully secure. So this is how it looks in, in my window. So my virtual coffee, I just click there and I click start at the time that the meeting is to begin. So it's as easy as that. So this is what a meeting window looks like. Um, I'm looking forward to the hairdressers opening again. There's a lot of bad hair days. This was one of them. So this is what a meeting looks like when I'm on my own. And at the bottom of the screen, you'll see the basic controls. Now, if you look across the bottom of your screen now, you're in a webinar and you're an attendee. So you'll see limited controls. But when you start a meeting, this is what you will see. So I just want to highlight a couple of the recent changes. So the key things and, and what we're going to show you uh, later on in the presentation is how to mute and unmute and how to share video, st start and stop your video and ask, control others on how they do it. We'll be looking at sharing screen. The record meeting is an important feature. But as mentioned earlier, just to add to the security, Zoom have added this security button in the main 
meeting window. They've also removed the meeting ID from view as previously mentioned, and all you can see at the top left hand corner now is Zoom and the Zoom logo. So they're the recent changes. It's important to point out that this is the security menu. All these settings were already in Zoom. It's just they were in different menus. And what Zoom have done and acted very quickly to do is bring these to the fore. So these are the most common things that they're asked to do. Is to, you can lock a meeting, which means that when everyone's in the meeting and you don't want coming and going, you can just lock that meeting. You can enable a waiting room so that if you have a class and you've got 30 people that they actually sit in a waiting room until you're ready and much as what, what we actually did before we hit broadcast on the webinar, we waited until we were ready and then we let you in. Um, so that can be done in meeting as well. And the enable waiting room here you might see is grayed out. And that's because in IMS, we set that as default right across the organization. So waiting rooms are compulsory and you can do that in your school as well. Um, and if it's not uh, done like that, you can either turn it on or off in your meetings. And these were the other things that were very core around, particularly in the education setting, what the host can do, whether the host can allow the participants to share their screen, to chat, and to rename themselves uh, was one of the key concerns of a lot of teachers was that students could name themselves funny things on their windows. So they were brought out to the fore and put in this special security me menu. So setting up a meeting, setting up a meeting really is setting, like setting up a classroom. And the new security settings that we looked through you can also, there's additional, when you click on this three dot uh, menu, when you're managing the participants, and here you have new participants on entry. If you don't want to clamber as they come into the virtual classroom, you can have it by default that they all mute. Uh, allow participants to unmute themselves, allow participants to rename themselves, play an enter or an exit chime, which is useful if, especially if, if you have a waiting room and you've started and there are other people waiting in the waiting room and you can lock a meeting as well. So they're the additional security features and you'll notice a couple of them have been brought out to the fore in the main security menu. What I'm gonna look at later on is getting into a little bit more depth about the waiting rooms, the audio and video controls, how you can control a classroom, the sharing screen controls, which I think is a key feature and the breakout rooms. And we'll look at those in the second part of the presentation. So when you've set up your meeting, this is what it looks like. This is a typical meeting window. I'm sure you've seen them all over the, all over the place at this stage and they're being shared on social media, their classrooms, business meetings, birthday parties, uh, quizzes. There's so many use cases and Jason's gonna talk about a little bit later on about some use cases and tips and tricks, uh, which I'm very look, much looking forward to hearing. So this is what your typical classroom will look like. So before I go on to the features and what you can do when you've got a meeting set up, I'm going to introduce you uh, to our educators because in IMS, we're not really educators and it's been invaluable to have the assistance of Ava and Kira in particular in leading us uh, the way in terms of content. And I want to invite at this point, Ava to say a few words on his experience of Zoom. Uh, and then we're going to hear from Kira. So I'm going to take a break. Aver, over to you. Goramaha Gut Leo. D. E. Vachorda, Augustasula Gum Gwilshevig Bwintan of us in webinar show. As mentioned already, I am principal of Unvoskal, a skull law and Gwailga in Limerick City Centre. Uh, we have 35 staff, teaching staff, and over 600 pupils. Uh, I'm in my second year as principal, so I'm still learning the ropes, to be honest. Uh, like every other school in the country, we are struggling with elements of distance learning at the moment. I used Zoom for the first time um, just six weeks ago. I'm not an expert on it, but I am learning, and I'm here, I suppose, to share my experience with you today. Uh, we're a Google school. We recently started integrating G Suite with Aladdin and various devices in our school. We currently use Aladdin to send work home each week uh, and we created class email addresses for pupils to submit their work and get feedback from teachers via email. 
Uh, I'm lucky to have a very good staff with a wide range of abilities and interests. And in week one of this closure, I asked the STEM team to look at the various platforms that were out there and the software that's there and come back with a recommendation as to what the best platform would be um, for us to, I suppose, assist us, I suppose, in communicating with our staff, pupils and parents uh, if this turned out to be, which it has turned out to be, a fairly lengthy school closure. We looked at Aladdin, uh, Gmail, uh, Google Classroom, Zoom, Dojo, Seesaw, Webex, Padlet, the whole lot of them really, uh, because we were looking for a platform that would complement what we're already doing, but also offer us something extra other than what we can already do through Aladdin and Gmail. Uh, we also wanted a platform that would allow us to collaborate, uh, meet up and possibly even teach online going forward. Uh, we tried Zoom and Google Meet uh, for staff meetings in week, week one, and we found Zoom to be much more reliable. Uh, it worked a lot better, to be honest, for teachers with poor Wi-Fi, and it offered more functionality and features as well for us as a staff. All members of staff, from the youngest teachers to the more experienced teachers, were very comfortable with Zoom from day one, and it was so easy to access on every device from a mobile phone to a PC. Uh, the functionality, I suppose, and the multiple uses of Zoom is what impresses us most about it. Since starting our Zoom journey a few weeks ago, we have used it for in-school management meetings, subject and class meetings, SEN meetings, whole staff meetings. We even had our Easter break up, our Easter party get together on Zoom uh, on the day of the Easter holidays. Uh, we used the breakout rooms and we played a few games and it was great for fun and did wonders for morale on the day of the holidays. Uh, the live polls, I suppose, and the breakout rooms are a really fantastic feature uh, because they really facilitate workshop style meetings, if you like, uh, and very effective decision making on a staff level, as well as the opportunities it offers uh, for working with pupils going forward. Uh, one of my colleagues actually recently joked with me, asking me if we were going to hold all our staff meetings in future on Zoom, given that I can mute everybody at the click of a button and get decisions made faster. So we'll see where that goes. Um, I suppose our teachers have used Zoom in the last few weeks to work collaboratively to teach lessons with each other. Each, each teacher contributes as part of the lesson uh, using the screen share feature that Leo is going to show you. They can share PowerPoints and share whiteboards, and that allows them to cover new content. Uh, we recorded the lessons at the start and we saved the recording to the cloud and just sent the link home on Aladdin. I used it myself to, to record an Easter video message that I sent to the whole school on the day of the holidays, and I got fantastic feedback from parents. Uh, just comments from kids so delighted to see uh, a member of the school staff or, or, or myself as principal as it was on the day and um, so it's something I'm going to continue using going forward to be honest as, prin as principal because it's been fantastic for me. Uh, uh, some of my teachers are already looking at teaching live on Zoom now that they've practiced teaching recording lessons and I'm going to support them in that now that I know how to use Zoom securely going forward uh, and now that we have revised our EUP policy as well in the school. So in summary I suppose what are the key benefits of Zoom for us as a school or for myself as a primary school principal. The key for me is that all of our teachers are now pro account holders on Zoom, uh, thanks to the guys in IMS. Uh, and that gives us greater, con greater, if you like, opportunities for teacher collaboration and communication amongst our staff. Added, I would say to your G Suite or your Microsoft, I would say Zoom is just a fantastic way to communicate collaborate and bring staff with you, for your, especially if you're a principal of a school, to bring people with you on this journey. Uh, for me, I can check in with my staff on a weekly basis and I can support my colleagues remotely, which is hugely beneficial. Um, Zoom will not replace, but rather complement, I would say, what, what we're already doing, certainly anyway, on Aladdin and G Suite, we will add it on to it. Uh, it's a very, very powerful platform com for communicating with pupils, staff and parents. Uh, my advice, however, would be to take baby steps. I would say get your IT savvy teachers on board first, first because they will drive this for you and support you with it. After one or two meetings, people get very comfortable with it and they start recording lessons uh, before even considering going live with pupils. Uh, reach out for help as well if you need it. IMS have been fantastic for us and they've supported everything and any questions we've had. And finally, I would say just get your teachers collaborating in small groups on Zoom. After a while, they will get comfortable with it. Uh, they'll get familiar with it and they'll start to enjoy it and use it more. And after that, it's really just a case of seeing where this Zoom journey, if you like, takes us. So uh, that's it from me, Leo Gormagwiv. Thank you very much, Aver. Uh, thanks for that. That's great input. Um, I'm going to hand you over to Kira Nidriskol now, who's going to uh, say a few words about her experience. Kira. Andy uh, Bacorda, um, thanks, Meaning, for inviting me to here today. I'm delighted to share 
my journey so far about Zoom and um, from a teacher's perspective, teaching live classes. So um, I have experience using Zoom myself as a student and um, because at the moment I'm doing the PDS um, L course with UL. So we have had to collaborate on, um, on, on joint projects and presentations. So I've used it from that perspective, collaborating for hours with, with my uh, fellow students. So when the, uh, the schools closed, it was an obvious move for me to use Zoom um, to teach my students. So I had to make the decision when the schools closed what I could manage. I decided that I was going to um, teach live classes for my fifth and sixth year um, pupils and to wait then um, for the junior cycle um, big, and just record lessons for them. I just wanted to become familiar with it. I, um, I employed the flip teaching model um, where they were becoming familiar with the material themselves. And then when I had the one class within a week uh, for maybe an hour, an hour and a half, we went through exam papers, problem solving and so forth. I found that a really good um, use of time. But I learned a lot of lessons, say, over the first three weeks. And in the background, I suppose I was trying to plan for the junior cycle, which is, um, you know, a completely different beast, the leaving cert. And um, there was a few things that I had to consider um, with the junior cycle. And I have started teaching with the junior cycle this week, and, and it has been fantastic. But in the junior cycle, you know, there's a lot less teaching talk, a lot more um, group, group activities with students, um, a, a lot more sort of uh, discussion and debate. And I've been trying to think of ways to do that. Now I've had experience with a couple of platforms over the last three weeks and I suppose there's been three areas that I found very important for successful uh, teaching and learning in my experience and Zoom um, was the only platform that had these features that helped me sort of overcome the challenges but also kind of um, you know, embrace a lot of opportunities that I found really, really fantastic. So the first one is being connected. I suppose it was very important um, for me um, to be able to see the students and then see me. And you might think, well, that's obvious, of course, you're using um, an online platform, but it's not really, not all platforms can do that. It, like, sometimes um, when you share a screen, you can't see your students. And I found that that was a really, really important element. Um, I can now see my students while I'm sharing the screen and we can, it, it, you know, I can see what they're, uh, you know, if they look confused, I can actually see that. I can see them raising their hands sometimes. And that's a really important feature. And um, the next one was, it was engagement. And especially for the younger students, I, I found that, I find that you really have to be checking in with them nearly every few minutes. And um, the, the features in Zoom are fantastic. Again, little features that you you may overlook and say that's cute, but it's very, very important that you're teaching online, like the reactions, getting a thumbs up. It's really, really important for them and for me to feel like we're still connected. Uh, the polls as well, putting in polls as well every few minutes just to kind of check in, make sure we're all on the same page. And then um, yesterday I had great success using Kahoot um, uh, and that actually Shane had suggested. Thank you, Shane. And it was actually fantastic. The kids loved it. I could see straight away with, uh, who understood, who didn't. And I was able to address it um, in that moment in time. And that I found that fantastic relief for me as a teacher um, and I felt I made real progress and the last thing is this was is the collaboration um, and teamwork and uh, there's another platform that I've used that facilitates the breakout uh, rooms which I think is phenomenal uh, for young students and you to be able to uh, create a group before the lesson or automatically assign groups and for the teacher to be able to go in each and every group and check in and to May you know, and give them perhaps like um, a Google form or something like that that they can collaborate on and feedback together. I think really rich kind of learning will go on there, and I'm very very excited about that feature. And then I suppose uh, finally, just to, to mention that um, we we have now thank you to Leo and Shane and IMS for providing our school um, uh, with the pro licenses. We set it up yesterday. The the pro licenses, and I sent them out. Now a lot of our staff. Had been using Google Meet and Google Zoom, um, uh, sorry, and Zoom anyway. Um, but as far as in the background, from a leadership perspective, it's been great for me to be able to check in to see now I can see, you know, the classes that are going on. So, for example, we released it yesterday and we've had uh, the majority of teachers have signed up to it. There's already been 14 meetings, 200 and, uh, uh, 2,500 minutes, and 232 participants. 
And that's fantastic data for me to have um, in my planning and my evidence going forward. Um, and I just, did, I just didn't have that with, with other platforms. So all in all, I'm really excited now, instead of dreading sort of what are we gonna be doing over the next few weeks, I'm really excited about all the features offered by Zoom. And I'm really sort of hopeful for our, for, for our students going forward and being able to connect with them is so important for me as a teacher and for them and student voice, I think, is amplified like, like no other uh, through the use of Zoom. So uh, th thanks for your time, guys. Thank you so much, Kira. It's so refreshing to get a, a view from uh, what, what, how you're dealing with uh, this crisis. And, and my takeaway from listening to Ava and Kira really is the ease of use of Zoom and how it's making their lives easier. And I think this is the key to the success of Zoom and why we uh, are encouraging everyone to use it. So in this part of the presentation, um, I'm just going to look at Zoom then as a teaching tool. So both Aver and Kira have been finding these things out as they play with Zoom, and they've mentioned uh, pretty much all these features in, in as they spoke. So we're just going to look at it in a little bit of detail and just demonstrate what Zoom can do for you as a teaching tool. So. So one of the things uh, you might have seen is the virtual backgrounds. You can actually put a virtual background behind. So one of the areas of concern for some teachers is if they're teaching from home, that they don't want their houses being seen by students. And this is a nice feature of Zoom, the virtual background. So you can see I'm using uh, Shane and Earl as my guinea pigs in, the, in this meeting. Uh, and as you can see, Shane has the Cliffs of Moher like I've never seen them before. Uh, surely using a filter there uh, as his background and I can assure you he wasn't at the Cliffs of Moher and nor was Earl in a Manhattan style loft apartment during our meeting. So these are just uh, examples of virtual backgrounds that you can apply. Uh, you can click on the arrow beside stop video and click choose virtual background and you can upload any photo. It's good to have a blank wall behind you or even better a green wall or green screen behind you and you'll really get a flawless seamless virtual background. So that's one element that sets uh, Zoom apart. So when we're in the meeting, how we manage our meetings, and I touched on the waiting rooms, and this is how the waiting room works. So by default in IMS, we all have waiting rooms on, and by default for the education licensing that we're gonna give everyone, they will have waiting rooms uh, enabled as well. So this is what it looks like. I'm on my own in my meeting. I'm meeting with Patrick. I'm not ready. So he's sitting in the waiting room. So I have options. I can admit him. I can remove him if he's an unwanted uh, attendee, or I can just send him a message to say, we'll be with you in five minutes. So that's how it works. So this is a typical meeting. There's four of us in here, and there's two people waiting in the waiting room. So you can actually wait, uh, deal with something uh, that's private to these four individuals before admitting people. And when there's a build-up of people in the waiting room, you can message them or you can admit them all or you can click on one and admit one at a time. So the waiting rooms is really makes your meeting very, very secure. It gives the host or the teacher full control and it absolutely eliminates Zoom mobbing of any description. So Zoom is safe when you have your waiting room or your meeting password on. The audio control. So it's a teaching tool. Again, you don't want too many people. There's going to be a lot of background noise from the various houses of Ireland. So rather than having the dog barking or the baby crying or the little brother shouting, um, you have the option to mute all uh, of your students or unmute them all. So in this example, in the left hand side, you can see I'm the host. The host is, controls the meeting uh, or the teacher and I have everybody in here muted. In the second example, I have everybody unmuted. And you can see that Shane Dinich, if you can see his microphone, is different to the others. That means he's talking at that moment. And then in the third example, we have a mixture where I've let people, some people uh, talk and others I've left on mute. So you can have a mixture. So the audio controls is hugely important. I'd also encourage when you're setting up a meeting room or a classroom that you have everybody mute on entry so that they don't clamber in with the dog barking and, and the children crying. 
the video controls. So again, varies from from uh, school to school, and particularly between primary and post primary, there's a there's concern about uh, having younger children on camera. This is all at your control. You can choose to show or not to show the, the people's cameras. If you have a situation where you actually want to see them and they don't have their camera on, you can right click on the, on the person and your participants. And you can actually ask to start video. And then they will see this screen that says the host has asked you to start your video. Again, just from a security point of view as well, just so that you know that it's actually Shane Dinage you're dealing with and it's not Shane Dinage's younger brother on his iPad or something like that. So yeah, you have all those controls. So the audio and the video controls uh, are very important in an education setting. The chat function, you'll notice that there's a chat function uh, in Zoom as well. And here you, again, the host or the teacher controls the chat. So you can change the permissions of everyone, change them individually. It's a good place for Q&A and to instruct uh, people one-to-one -one instruction. And you can see some examples here where I've selected, poor Shane Dinage is getting it all today. I've selected Shane Dinage to speak privately and just send him a quick message. Okay, and then he, he can choose to answer me privately as well. And you can control the chat as, and you can control what the participants can do by saying that they can only chat with the host or they can chat with nobody or they can chat with everyone publicly and everyone publicly and privately. So again, it's up to, it's up very much up to yourself. I think the host only chat is probably the, the most common and is there by default. So those audio, video and chat controls are very important. And again, we're back to our, our classroom or our meeting. This is what it looks like. I have the majority of people here muted uh, and a couple of people unmuted, Matt and James and Elizabeth are all unmuted and everyone's got their camera on. So let's get into a couple of the additional features that really set Zoom apart. The breakout rooms is my favorite thing about Zoom in a teaching environment. And as Kira mentioned, it's hugely beneficial for, to her in, in, as a teaching tool. So you can assign with your pro license, you can assign up to 20 breakout rooms and you can automatically assign children to a room or you can manually assign children to a room. So for example, if you have 30 participants, you can click on this window here and assign the 30 participants into five rooms. And then you have five automatically, it separates your group into five groups of six. And it will tell you then that you have your six participants per room and you click create rooms and away you go. And now you have everyone is just split up into all the different breakout rooms. And you as the teacher and the host can move from room to room. If you have a teaching assistant, you can make them a co-host and they can move into other rooms as well. So you can go from room to room and check on everybody and see how they're getting on. Uh, and you can move the participants and you can swap people uh, from room to room as well. And you can broadcast messages, the same message to all rooms at any given time. And I like this one. You can set the automatic timer for all to rejoin the main session. So the, what the automatic timer means that you're not, you're not having to, to jump from room to room saying five minutes left, guys, five minutes left. You can just set it, okay, you have 10 minutes, guys, I'll be back and, and you'll be brought back into the room. And when that 10 minutes is up, you can set a countdown timer so that they can finish up whatever they're doing. So 30 seconds, 60 seconds, and that gives them time to wrap up and then we'll jump them back into the main session. So really, really good teaching tools uh, that, that set Zoom apart. So this is a typical uh, meeting room. So we have a mixture. So I just wanted to give you an idea of what, what it could look like if you had a mix of things going on. So I have my, I have my video on and my audio on. I have everyone else muted. Four people in the room have no cameras on, and that's fine. Carl has no camera on, but he's chosen to have a profile picture 
instead. Uh, so when his camera doesn't show, his picture of County Limerick, I think, shows. And then we have a comedian up in the right hand corner here. You'll see with his virtual background and you can make sure that nobody is able to turn on virtual backgrounds. You can set that setting as well in your classroom. And here I have the, the participants that are in the room and I've, I have chat as well. So I can also do things like pin myself as the as the main speaker. I can pin my video so that there, there's not, when I'm actually speaking, when I'm trying to teach, I can be the, the main uh, screen and you have all the other participants in galleries around the main screen. Here also, you, I, can re, I can obviously rename myself. So in this case, I've renamed myself the teacher, but I can also right click on any of the, the participants and I can do various things like make them the host. If I, need to, if I need to leave and there's a meeting that's going on or a class that's going on that I want them to continue, you can select someone to make them the host. You can allow them to record, you can remove them, which removes them completely from the classroom, or you can put them in a waiting room. So if you want them to go out and come back in, you can put them in the waiting room. So there's, there's additional extra controls that you can from the right click menu. So I'm gonna finish up on sh screen sharing because it's probably along with breakout rooms and controlling, uh, controlling the environment is the key feature uh, and what you can do with sharing. So you can see from my screen at the moment, I am screen sharing. I'm screen sharing a PowerPoint presentation. So when I click share screen, I'll see this window here. And basically it shows me all the windows that I have open on my computer. Um, now, if I have more than the, the allocated 12 windows, I can click show all windows and it'll, it'll show me the other win open windows. But if you notice at the top, top of the, the choices here are screen one and screen two. So that's, I, I work off two screens at my desk so I can look at both. Um, and it's important that you don't share screens if you don't want pop-up windows, reminders, email notifications coming up, make sure you share whatever window that you want to share rather than the screen. So that, that would be a good tip uh, for teaching. So you can see here, I have a Google window open. I've got some files. I've got my Microsoft Teams with Zoom integrated. I've got some files here, paintbrush, PowerPoint presentation, and a Word document. So I have everything at my, so I can choose to share anything I want. But I'm just going to start off by showing you the whiteboard. Um, the whiteboard is your, your, your virtual whiteboard. And you can write on the whiteboard and you can annotate and you can actually invite others to annotate with you as well. But before I show you the, the whiteboard, a lot of people don't actually like using uh, a mouse to write. So if they want to do freehand writing, they might like to join their iPad uh, to the meeting instead. So that can they can share out their iPad then and use a stylus pen and do freehand. So one, one, one of my kids' teachers in particular, the physics teacher, she reached out to me and said, look, I would rather, I don't like using the mouse to write. Is there any way? And I said, would you like to use your iPad? I showed her how to do it and she's up and running and she taught my 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 child's physics class yesterday and she had her iPad and she was writing problems on it. So I'm going to I'm going to show you just before I show demonstrate the screen sharing just a couple of things again about security the host has full control. So the host can decide uh, if, if it's only one participant can share at a time and whether they share at all. So you can see here who can share, only host or all participants. So uh, this is important again. And again, unless you want them to share their work, I would recommend who can share to be by default only host, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna uh, share, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually stop share my presentation and I'm gonna demonstrate how you can use the sharing. So I'm gonna start off by sharing a whiteboard. So if you can all see that, so what, what you can see is me writing my name. And again, as I mentioned, sometimes it's hard to use a mouse. So you can drop in a text box. So you can all see that. I can, you can also see that I have the format in as purple, so I can change that to red. And then I can decide, well, 
this is a test, I can put on things like a stamp where you can actually correct your work as well. At any stage, you can also turn on little features like a spotlight. So you can see from my presentation, I was using a spotlighter and here you can spotlight different things. Okay. You can also use an arrow just to be really emphatic. And you can also erase any content and clear it down. Um, the other thing is you can save. So you, when, you, when you're working on a problem, let's say, you can invite other students to work on the whiteboard with you by giving them remote control of the whiteboard. It, it could be, uh, uh, you could be taking a chance there, but um, it's a great tool to have. And at the end, you can save this and you can save the whiteboard and send it to all your, all your students. So really it's, it's one of the features that I think is probably uh, set, the, the, the granular control you have the whiteboard is sets uh, it apart from other platforms. So the other things I'm gonna show you then is I'm gonna show you a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, and Aver has, Aver has kindly donated some slides that he had uh, been using. And this is just some primary content that you can see. Um, so this is just a, a straightforward PowerPoint presentation shared. Um, and here you can see how you can set up a maths problem. bring me back to my days. And you can set up things like quizzes. Uh, and what, what Kira was saying earlier, you can set up Kahoot quizzes and things like that and really see the full benefit of it. The, the other sort of things that you can do are showing just um, PDFs. So this is a typical PDF. So relevant to us, the CPSMA guidance note in relation to teleconferencing uh, and video conferencing for board of management meetings. And you'll see, you can scroll down here and you can discuss it all. And you can see, importantly, at the bottom that Zoom is one of the platforms that they advocate for using. So these are the sort of things, PDFs, PowerPoint presentations, um, YouTube clips. YouTube clips, I find, uh, where you can demonstrate video and audio is, is really fantastic as well. So I'm just going to share this out with you. Gonna stop share there one second. Share. Okay. Now. So let's say I have 50 people and I want people to discuss something in groups of five. I can set that up. They'll be sent out of the main room into the small groups where they'll get to chat until the host. People are entering rooms, being inappropriate. It's just another layer of protection that's really helpful for you to use. Okay. So the other things that you can do is share. And I just want to share one more thing with you before we go on is the event feedback. So at the end of this webinar, when you leave, you will see uh, the event feedback where you can just choose and everyone that as they leave, they'll see this. And it's very important for us that you fill in this event feedback and give us data for the various education centers around the country. So guys, uh, without further ado, I'm going to hand you over. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm going to hand you over to Jason Mobley, uh, who's going to speak a little bit about his use cases and some tips and tricks. Jason, over to you. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, again, my name is Jason Mobley. I am with Florida A&M University in Tallahassee, Florida in the United States. Um, we have been using Zoom for quite some time now. Um, we started about three years ago, and I have been actively using synchronous video teaching for about 10 years now. That said, let me tell you a little bit about the FAMU Zoom history. Um, a couple years ago, we did a, a proof of concept, meaning that we wanted to test Zoom out before we deployed it to our teachers. 
uh, and our professors. And we did that. Uh, very, very uh, happy with the feature set of Zoom. I've seen a lot of questions in the Q&A about features and whiteboarding. And I guess the question that I would ask myself is what sets Zoom apart over all the other platforms? And I have used Cisco WebEx. I have used Teams. I have used Google Hangouts, Google Meet. I've used them all. But I think what sets Zoom apart is, number one, the features, the ease of use, uh, especially for students, uh, I'm even doing telemedicine with Zoom, and we have 70, 80-year-old patients coming in using Zoom without any issues whatsoever. Um, also, we deployed Zoom with COVID-19. We signed a site license back in January. And when we did that, uh, we didn't know that at the end of February, beginning of March, we would be thrust into this new environment. So we had a lot of faculty members kind of concerned. Uh, they've never taught in that environment from the questions that I've uh, seen on the Q&A. It seems like a lot of you are interested in a couple things. Number one, the features of Zoom. Number two, the security of Zoom. And I think Leo has done an excellent job in covering the security. But I wanted to kind of cover that one more time in, in a statement. When you get a house built, right, they put windows, they put doors, they might even put an alarm system in that house. When they do that, it is up to you to lock your doors at night and turn your alarm on when you leave. So the one thing that Zoom has always had is it has always had these features of meeting passwords and enabling the waiting cream. Uh, but now what we're having to do because of COVID-19 and Zoom has elevated because they've now servicing 3 million people um, on Zoom. But what they had to do is they've had to push these settings uh, to automatically put all these locks in. Um, at the university, we have had no issues with Zoom bombing. Uh, we have had no issues with anyone getting in. If you still read about that in the news, the only thing that could be happening is that someone is not turning those controls on. So I commend Leo for really hitting on those uh, because those are very important. And yes, you need to turn them on. But once you follow the, the plan that Leo has laid out, uh, you will not have an issue with Zoom bombing. You will not have an issue with anyone showing any lewd material or anything like that. Uh, so those controls are in place for a reason. Uh, what I'd like to talk to you about today is kind of Zoom for education and use cases and some best practices. So what I find interesting about Zoom is the various ways that you can use them. Initially, we talk about meetings or classes, but there are hundreds of other ways that you can use Zoom. Um, so let's talk about on the teaching and learning side. Uh, first of all, you can use it for live lectures or lessons. I've seen a lot of people in the Q&A ask about recorded lectures. So yes, you can pre-record lectures and then post them to Google Classroom or whatever platform you're using. Uh, you can do it for small group work. So we can use breakout rooms and assign that. You can preload the breakout rooms and assign specific students to specific rooms, or you can do them on the fly when you're in the meeting. So I like the features of that. You can use it for quizzes and surveys. Uh, again, uh, Leo has shown the polling feature. You can preload those polls and you can use them as a quiz and not show the results immediately or show them at the end of the quiz. And then you can download the results to use it as a great uh, situation. Um, at the university, we've even used it as virtual proctoring. We're in the midst of final exams starting uh, Monday. And we want to make sure that we don't have all this active cheating going on. Um, I, I get that you guys are primary and secondary education, but if you have the need for virtual proctoring, you can have students take their exams while someone is physically watching them. Uh, so that's a unique use case. Of course, uh, presentations and speeches. On the virtual engagement side, you can use it for office hours. If a student needs to meet with you or a parent needs to meet with you and talk with you about an issue with a student, you can use that. Uh, you also can use it for tutoring. Uh, you can use it for study groups, guest speakers, uh, parent-teacher conferences. Um, and again, I think I put virtual proctoring on there twice. On the professional development side, uh, teaching observations, uh, staff training, uh, teaching work groups and online conferences. And from a school district perspective, again, um, I think Aber mentioned on the staff meetings, he wanted to use that all the time because he can mute people. I think that's a good feature. Um, you can also use it to interview um, staff and, and incoming people uh, into your school. You can use it for announcements, uh, even emergency uh, preparation demonstrations and um, virtual commencement and graduation. So here in the States, uh, again, we can't have commencement. So what we're going to do is we're going to do it virtually. 
And we actually found a, a nice way to do that. You can include music and whatnot, and we're going to record that and share that with the students after they graduate. On the tips and best practices for distance uh, teaching, and there's there's hundreds more, but here's the top 10 that I want to cover with you today. Um, I would mute all participants upon entry to minimize student chatter. That's a setting when you book the meeting. So if a student somehow got kicked out of a meeting due to bad internet connection and they came back in and they forgot to mute and they're yelling at their dog or something, uh, if you mute them automatically on entry, then that you don't have to worry about dealing with muting them as they come in. Um, I would close all programs that create sound, uh, like your email and other programs with notifications, because you want to minimize um, anything that would cause distractions to the students. One thing that I recommend to our faculty is to book your classes as a reoccurrence with no fixed time. What that means is, let's say my class meets uh, every Monday. Instead of making it every Monday, if I say it's a reoccurrence with no fixed time, it's going to keep that ID for that class all the way until the point we come back to school. Because what I find is you don't want to have a new ID every time you have a class or every week because it confuses the students, it confuses the parents. So again, uh, point three is, is way less confusing to do that. I would test your teaching location prior to teaching. Um, what I mean by that is ask a colleague to join your video and make sure that they hear your sound, your audio, even record yourself and go back and watch the recording. Uh, I think it's very important from a teaching perspective is for you to see what the students see and, and what that kind of experience is. Uh, number six, require your students to be on camera and engage. Now, I did answer a question in the Q&A about can you turn the students' cameras off? Yes, you can, right? You, when you book your meeting, you can say uh, participants, no video. Again, I think you would take that on a case-by-case -case basis because I think each teacher has the ability to set up their class as they choose. But the reason that I recommend that they be on camera and engaged is if you're not on camera, how do you know that they're focusing to your lesson? And the one big thing about teaching over video is that we want to incorporate knowledge transfer, right? We want to make sure that the students are getting this. So the one thing when I teach over video, I always have all my students on a gallery view, which means that I see all of them on the screen at once. And I'm looking at their eyeballs, right? Because again, um, if I see someone looking confused, I'm going to call on them and ask them questions. Also, I like to use nonverbals, right? So I always tell my students, is everyone good? Give me a thumbs up. If you feel like I need to slow down, do like this. Um, if, if I'm driving you crazy and you feel like you're going to hang yourself right now, uh, just stay with me and I'll be with you through. So those nonverbals keep people drawn in the entire time that you teach. Um, also, uh, use a virtual background. Uh, as Leo has stated, it does make things look more personalized and professional. Um, and if you've ever seen the uh, video on the BBC where the gentleman's doing an interview and his kids are running in behind him and his wife runs in and snatches the baby, uh, if you had a virtual background, you probably wouldn't have seen all that. Um, also, if you need a green screen, they do sell them at thewebaround.com. I did see some questions on the chat about that they're sold out. Um, over in Ireland. I have seen them on eBay actually pretty cheap. Uh, what this does is it hooks to the back of your chair and then it cuts you out of the screen. Now, some of you might have experienced where you turn a virtual background on and it looks like the image is bleeding onto your face, right? What that is, and, and not to get super technical, but your processor of your laptop is not up to spec to allow you to use a virtual background without a green screen. But that doesn't mean that you can't still use a virtual background. You just need a green screen to, excuse me, to do so. Uh, number nine, preload your polls to access them quickly. So you can load the polls ahead of time, or you can ask a question for engagement at any point during the class. But I do recommend preloading them. And lastly, try to engage your students uh, with nonverbals as much as possible. Um, and again, I'll be answering questions in the Q and A and after my presentation, I'll be, uh, I'll stick around and answer any questions that you may have. So thank you for your time and I'll turn it back over to Leo. Jason, thank you very much. That was, that was great. And, and, uh, and to look at different 
use case that we hadn't thought about. I certainly didn't think about exams and monitoring exams. No, I think we all learned something every uh, uh, from from your tips there. So at this point, I'm going to invite my colleague Shane. Shane Hartigan is going to join us um, on the stage, and we're going to open up the floor to questions. Uh, so basically, the guys in the background have been answering questions, and I can see that there's almost it's over 200 questions that have been asked and nearly all of them have been answered in the background. So you'll see uh, answers to those questions that have been asked. So what I would do is I'd invite anyone at this stage that has a question to click on the raise hand button. And uh, Shane is going to moderate these, Shane. I think we have some raised hands already. We have Ruth and Laura. I'm gonna hand you over to Shane, but before I do, I just wanna thank all the speakers again, Kira, Ava, and Jason. Uh, really invaluable to have your input today. Thank you very much. Hey guys, how are you? Um, really interesting. Um, thank you so much for those presentations. Um, uh, we've just got Laura up on uh, question. Laura, do you wanna ask your question? Hi guys, I hope, yeah, I hope my internet connection is okay. Um, I just want to ask, sorry, first of all, thanks so much for the last two webinars and to all and to everybody today. I mean, those examples that Jason gave were, were unbelievably helpful for us in adult education. So I'm coming at it from another point of view. We have a concern um, within our provision that the server that Zoom is on is not secure. How true are those statements that have been made on the media about the server itself? Well, I mean, the, the, the Zoom records uh, its data in the cloud if you so if you choose to record it in the cloud, you can also record it locally um, if you want to bypass the cloud completely and just have your videos locally. It is a feature of the education and the pro licenses um, that, uh, that you are able to store in the cloud. Um, I mean, you know, the main thing about security around uh, um, Zoom is to have, you know, strong passwords. Don't use the same password on all your different uh, programs and your, your computers. Use a password vault. Um, the servers themselves, I mean, the data is, is encrypted and stored on, on Zoom's uh, um, servers. There are possibilities as well to um, implement local uh, recording so the the, that the videos are recorded, um, you know, in an Irish data center, for example, using uh, the, the uh, video connector. So there are options around this, um, okay. but, you know, Zoom is used throughout uh, Europe, it's GDPR compliant. Um, you know, it's been stressed, uh, stress test in, uh, tested already in those in those environments. But uh, I hope that answers your question. Thanks, Shane. I'll take that back to the powers that be. So, <laughs> thank, thank you so much, Laura. Thank Thanks you so much. I'm just uh, going to bring up Ruth Gallen there. Ruth, can you hear us? Okay. I can. Yeah. Thanks. No bother. How are you? Good. Thanks. It's all very informative and very exciting um, as an educational tool. But as a school, just before the closure, we were only in the process of rolling out our online platforms and we haven't managed to address those in our acceptable usage policy. So I'm wondering, where do we stand on now our acceptable usage policy? Do we need to update that to include platforms like Zoom? And do we need parental consent, especially for the under 16s engaging in Zoom? Well, I'm going to I'm going to pass that question to um, to Ava, actually, because Ava, I think we're working on some uh, documents recently for your your project. Do you want to maybe answer that, Ava? Yeah, Kira might be able to come in on this as well with me. We we certainly um, looked at our AUP policy to update us to make sure that it protected us in this regard. Um, and in terms of the parental consent, well, we, we use Aladdin. I'm not sure if you're primary school route or secondary, but we used um we used Aladdin, we were going using Aladdin to push out a new AP, AUP policy and get the parents to consent to it or to sign up to it. So that we, that's, we're just lucky that we can do that remotely through Aladdin. If you ha have Aladdin Connect um, in your school, you can send a, a new policy out and you can ask the parents to um, consent to it. So that's just to protect us, I suppose, really, you know. Uh, but the advice we got when we went looking for advice from our, um, our management board will say well, was that if parents choose to use Zoom, will say, or if they consent to the pupils going on Zoom, well, then that they're taking a part of the responsibility as well, and that we're responsible for what we for the content, we're responsible for what we put on the platform, but not necessarily responsible at the other end, if that makes sense. But definitely, I would advise uh, updating the AUP policy, and we've we have sent that away to get it um, to make sure it's it's copper fastened for us, you know. I'm not sure. Kira, you might have looked at your policy as well. Did you your AUP policy? 
Yeah, we're pretty much the same. But I mean, we work really closely. We're we're ETB of the LCETB, and um, they've been just a fantastic support um, in relation to um, all things uh, teaching, learning, technology, everything. So uh, we really look to them for advice, and um, in consul in consultation with them, and senior management have updated the AUP, um, and everything. I suppose communication. Uh, with parents um, as well and communicating them all along the way of any changes and and uh, it's always an open door policy for them to contact us mm -hmm. in concern but um, our parents have been really really supportive and actually we, they've been surveyed a lot parents and students and they've been um, seeking live classes um, a, a more so the senior level um, students and all, all of our students now are getting live classes um, as much as teachers can, um, obviously given the circumstances at home. Um, so that's where we are at the moment. But I suppose, yeah, it's important to, to, to seek advice like Gabriel mentioned and make sure that you're, uh, you know, feel secure in what you're doing. Cool. Um, so we've got, does, does that answer your question, uh, Ruth? Yeah, that's perfect. Right. Thank you. Fantastic. Fantastic. So we've got, we've got uh, I think we've got Laura uh, there as well. Do you, um, do you have a question, Laura? Um, Hi, Laura Irwin, is it? Yes, that's right. Hi, Laura. How yes, are you? Sorry. You're very welcome. Okay, all right. I'm just wondering, um, when the children are in the breakout rooms, can they talk among themselves while you go into another room, you know, if they were doing some group work? Y yes, they can. Um, so, Leo, do you want to take that, that one? Sure. Yeah. Hi, Laura. Yeah. When you separate them into the breakout rooms and if you leave a breakout room, the kids in that room can talk to each other, but in that room only. So okay, they're, they're, yeah, they're pigeonholed into each room, but the teacher can move from room to room. Perfect, thanks. Thanks, Laura. So that's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty good. Um, Lu Louise, have you, um, you have a question? Louise McMahon, can you hear yes. us? Hi, I can, thank you. It's been really informative, thanks so much. I wanted to ask, how does the school go about signing up and how do I um, you know, sort of give everybody a, a Zoom identity in the staff? Okay, so what we, we've done is um, we've, we're sending out a link um, and an update um, newsletter. Um, we've done that for the previous webinars, um, actually this morning. So today, uh, after this webinar, we're going to send out a link to anybody that has registered. And on that, there is, um, it's, it's for principals. Okay, so, you, you know, if, if you're not the principal, don't fill it out, right? Uh, but follow your principal and, and ask them, would they, would they complete it? Mm -hmm. um, and what we're doing is that these forms, when they come in, uh, we're going to uh, issue um, licenses to the, to the principal of the school. And uh, they then um, are the owner of the Zoom license for that school. And they can assign the, the administrators locally or the, their, their helping staff or, or others that are in the, in the school and effectively onboard their teachers into the Zoom account. And, and so that's the next steps that we're, we're going to, we're, we're, we're going for so um so keep an eye out for the email as i say it must come from the principal um if you do because we are we're, we're going to send it to everybody that that is uh, registered and attended these uh, webinars um but uh it needs to be from the principal it, it does have a box on it that you are the principal so it confirms that it, it confirms that so hopefully that answers it yeah. it does indeed thank you that's great just, Thanks very much. just to add to that shane um it's the the once the principal does sign up we can assign licenses not just to the teaching staff, but also the admin staff in the school. I'm, I'm fielding a lot of questions around that. So it's for the teaching staff and the and the remaining staff, the school as well. Right, right, okay. Um, so let me see, I've got uh, George uh, Moran there. George, uh, can you hear us okay, George? I think you've uh, just unmuted your mic. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Shorsha Morton, principal in Brave School in Castlebar County Mayo. I an absolute novice at Zoom until about 10 days ago. And uh, I looked at all the others and like that, I find it absolutely superb. And again, uh, I had four Zoom cluster meetings today with my staff and uh, yesterday too, and we're finding it really, really good. So thanks to Zoom and that, and we will be signing up with um, IMS for a school-based one. My question is for Aver on Moscow. Uh, Aver, could you through IMS send a draft non-identifying policy of your updated AOP to us so we could work on it as, as primary schools? Um, is that is that a possibility? 
Um, sure, anything is a possibility in this day and age, isn't it? <laughs> um, no, it certainly is. It certainly is. If you want to drop an email to Shane or Leo, we'll give you whichever email you're going to drop an email address to, and I'll I'll talk to the guys on my side and see can we share it because I I actually was asked what it went out on the network, you know, um, through the the IPPN network as well. But I, I suppose I don't, want, I don't want to go sharing mine until somebody has has proofed it for me. But definitely, if you want. If you want to um, drop me, I'm not sure. Can I send you a private message there, or if you if you actually put a question there in the Q and A, I can answer your question privately with my personal email address as well, if that's okay. Okay, okay. well that that that's great, and I think like Michael Ryan and the WHO, Joe, I think we're good to act and maybe seek a little bit of forgiveness after. Is where everybody has really embraced it's very well, and yeah. it's very well. So. Um, and yeah, I, there, there, I there's an element there's an element of this as well of just taking a few risks for the time that's in it too you know what i mean sometimes it's 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 about asking for forgiveness later isn't it yes uh, i think we, we all may have a bit of history with that for a meal market ever uh, i'll talk for your fault um so we've got uh, a brendan o'regan um up next there brendan can you hear us um um okay i just i think you're just unmuted there brendan um, let me just unmute Brendan there. Can you hear us, Brendan? Yes, can you hear me? I can indeed. I can indeed. Great. Okay, a couple of related questions. Um, if you are for the moment only on, let's say, the ordinary free Zoom, are those security features available to you or do you have to wait till you get the pro version? Okay, so um, I'm going to, I can, I can take that question, right? I mean, the uh, the main, look, Zoom uh, education licenses of Zoom have, uh, or the standard uh, privacy agreements that you, that Zoom have in the pro licenses are also in the education licenses. However, there's an additional privacy statement that comes with an education license. And what that does is it beefs it up and can, makes it comply with things like consent and, and, and further GDPR um, requirements. So, so this is very important um, that you know that you use education licensing in an education in a in a in an environment, particularly where there's under uh, where there's minors and uh, and again it's it's built for that. So you know you you can um, you can of course use a basic license, but I I mean education is uh, education licensing is built for that purpose. So um, and this is what what we're we're doing is is bringing forward that everybody is under the right category of license and. Um, and that's that's the that's the idea around these webinars. Yeah, and will the will the education centres be regarded as institutions as well as schools? So if you're a tutor in an education centre, you'd be like a teacher in a school situation. Yeah, and yeah. Leo, do you want to take that? Yeah, yeah, Brendan, that's that. The 21 education centres around the country will be treated as schools, and we're going to be setting those up, um, and. We are looking at rolling out video conferencing uh, in each of those centres as well for teaching into the future. Um, and they will they will be set up with webinar and they'll be set up with Zoom rooms as well as Zoom meetings. Right. And the last bit, just related again, if for teachers who are home tutoring, you know, to students who, for whatever reasons, can't or won't come to school, um, if they're not attached to a school, can they still <laughs> use it or what's the story there? Um, again, what, what uh, in terms of the um, I just just trying to understand the question. So, if a school, if a student is homeschooling, is it that they would they qualify? Is it not, not so much with their parents, but where um, where the parents would want them to go to school, but they won't for whatever psychological reasons. So they hire a home tutor okay. who may or may not be um, a regular teacher, if you like. Well, you know, if you have um, if you have uh, teachers that are under um, that, you know, that these these specialist teachers um, and they are part of your education program or part of your your school, um, you know, indirectly, not as full time, but um, uh, you can you can issue them with education licenses because they're right. they're working on your behalf effectively okay. and okay. and would qualify as another staff member effectively as okay. my my take on it. But I mean, I'm I'm um, I, I I'm I'm pretty pretty sure about that. So I, I'll I'll um, I can find out actually, Brendan, and, and give you pop you an email afterwards and just to maybe to to uh, uh, to to be a hundred percent, but yes, I don't see any reason why not. Okay, thanks very much. No problem. I think we've Una Gibbons there. Una, can you hear yes, us? Yes, I don't actually have a question. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes, yes. I just want to say thank you 
for putting on this webinar today and your amazing group of people leading education in the country and it is very admirable and I just want to say thank you and this is an amazing platform for schools and for students it is fantastic so well done that's all I want to say thank you Thank you very thank much, you, Una, very for much. those kind words. It's, thank uh, you. you know, we're, we're thrilled to be involved and, you know, we've met so many really amazing people. And um, I suppose kind of this, the Zoom is such a tremendous product and it's great to see it making a difference. Um, I think, do we have Louise up already? I'm, apologies, Louise. I know you've been waiting there uh, for a few minutes. Can you hear us okay, Louise? No, okay. Um, I'd just like I, to say that last question was my favourite so far. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> Um, I unmuted or am I still here? You're, you're, you're still, still with you're still, still, I need you. to unmute myself. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Una. Bye Thanks, bye. Una. Thank you. Um, actually, yeah, I mean, just kind of take some some questions. I mean, I, I, Jason, what do you what's your take on, on all of this stuff that's going on here? I mean, you guys are are, are obviously third level is is and the scale that you're working on. You've what is it? Twelve thousand students. Uh, we saw an amazing webinar last week on from your 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 set your project. Yeah, I mean, Shane, the thing that, that I find fascinating, and, and I, I, I'll come back to what Una just said, the fact that you guys are taking such a lead role in the education of all of these schools and centers across Ireland is huge because, again, we're, you guys, well, we all are educators here, right? And the other thing that educators need is education on this platform. And um, so, so I like the fact that we're bringing everyone together in these webinars. We're answering questions. We're, we're going over all these concerns. We're talking about um, acceptable use policies and whatnot. So I, I think this is phenomenal. And, and I really, um, I, the sentiments that Una and everyone has given, I, I thank you guys for hosting this and inviting me today. Anna, we're, we're the... We're thrilled, uh, Jason, that you, you've taken the time out of your busy day. Uh, you're looking after a very big part of that, the, the university there on the, all of the IT. So, I mean, you know, it's tremendous to get the, the and, and also to Kira and Ava has been brilliant. Um, I think we've got, uh, we've got Anne McLaughlin there. And have you got a question? Do you want to Hi, guys. Ask? It's just, it's just, a, a, it's on GDPR, really. Someone mentioned about the breakout room and children talking on their own. I presume there's no record facility or anything there, or if there is and someone uses it, is there GDPR issues? I, I can take that. Uh, in terms of the recording, there is no record facility uh, in the breakout room, so it's Grand. GDPR compliant, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was it. Thank you. And thanks thank to me, and it has been. It has been so informative. Great. Thank, thank you very much for your question. Um, I think we're kind of, I mean, there's, there's quite a lot of people. I mean, we've still got a lot of people in the audience just conscious that we're pulling on to half us. Uh, we're on the hour and a half now, and I think probably we're probably time to maybe, I, I would like to, I mean, maybe hand it back over to, uh, to Celia, maybe to, um, uh, we're going to, we've got, uh, I've got a lot of the questions answered and what we might do is put together a, a, an answer bank and, uh, and use that going forward. Um, so maybe just to, to, to hand back and get the final thoughts from Celia and, um, as I say, really, really important that you guys please, please fill out the, the survey form after the event. It's hugely beneficial for us to recalibrate our webinars on an ongoing basis and, um, you know, and to keep delivering uh, better and better webinars. So I, I, it's, it really means a lot to that you guys fill that out. So Celia, over to you. Okay. Well, just to say thanks a million to uh, all who contributed, Ava, Kira, Leo, uh, Shane and uh, Jason, thank you for joining us. Um, it has been a really um, informative and, and helpful as we expected it would be. Um, just a shout out to my own teachers and uh, principals in the Waterford area, because when I introduced everyone at the start, I forgot to mention my own group, uh, all my teachers uh, who are affiliated to the Waterford Teacher Centre, where I'm the director. Um, and uh, I'm, thank you all for joining. I suppose just to mention one thing that a lot of questions have come up about the facility, the breakout room, Rooms, and I've used them in, you know, in another realm uh, with, with, with uh, CPD, and um, they really are a, a feature with huge potential because um, 
you know, kids have the ability to engage with each other, you know, independently. And I find that if you give them a focus or give them a topic specifically to discuss and assign somebody to report back to the big group when they all re-enter the main room again, it does tend to focus it and it allows the conversation to uh, be richer by the fact that you have five or six or maybe up to 10 different groups feeding back to the main group on different topics. And I found that feature really excellent. So I think, you know, don't be afraid of it. Uh, I think once kids have a feature, have a focus and, and, and get the opportunity and have the responsibility to actually feedback on what they've discussed, I think you'll find that it actually works really well. But um, just to say, I suppose, uh, thanks to everyone for your engagement and do fill out the, the evaluation form because it's important for us as directors to know the best way that we can support you going forward, uh, because we feel that, you know, this uh, element of online learning will continue for the foreseeable future anyway, and we want to be providing the best service as possible to all our teachers around the country. So thanks to everyone at IMC. It's been amazing. I think that's uh, that's fantastic. We're we've just gone a couple of minutes over, and I've just finished off the last poll, um, Celia. That you, uh, while you were talking, I'm just going to end the poll. We've got another couple of people to vote. We're up to 69%. It's it's a question on um, after seeing the presentation. Do you have security concerns around Zoom? I mean, Zoom is safe. You need to use the the, the meeting room. You need to use the password. You need to use the things that are uh, in built into Zoom. Uh, Zoom are making tremendous efforts to uh, improve the security all the time they're not perfect uh, but they're getting they're they're really embracing this and uh, and um, you know it's it's one of the easiest packages uh, uh, video conferencing packages that uh, that we've ever used it, it uh, I think people can can just jump in download it install it and uh, they're up and running with meetings and um, I think we just uh, we can publish those results here and I think we'll we'll just kill it off. There we go. Uh, we've now got uh, yeah. So you know this is, I think that the that uh, after seeing the presentations, you know, you, you, it does help to to know that you have you have these tools. And look, if you're still worried about a meeting, you can lock the meeting. And you know, for very sensitive meetings, lock the meeting. Nobody is going to be able to zoom bomb when you're a locked meeting. What you're seeing in the papers are situations where people are publishing their meeting IDs online not using passwords not using waiting rooms and not using locked meetings and that's what happens uh, is that we see these things up in the paper so it's important that we balance that and separate the fact from the fiction and kill the fuds or you know that's out there um and that's that's uh, that's you know that's what we're delighted to be part of that so as I say, we're we're um we're, we probably should wrap it up. I still we have a, quite an amazing amount of uh, we've over seven hundred people still in the audience. So and um, thank you so much for everybody to come come out and 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 to to Kira and and Aver and Jason Leo, uh, brilliant and and also all the directors from the uh, education um uh, for the education centres that have been just fantastic with their feedback and the and their support and we're we're delighted to be involved. Thank so, you very much, guys. Enjoy the rest you. of your evening. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.